All right, welcome back to another episode of the EV Show. Today we're here with Mark Brems. He's an EV West technician and he's working on a 1967 21 window BW Samba bus. That's right. Yeah. We're gonna put what we call mostly our standard package in this. It's a normal nine inch AC motor. We're gonna hook it up to the stock VW transaxle. What this allows is the minimum amount of alteration in the vehicle. And we really try and keep them stock, especially something like the 21 window Samba bus that is uh, arguably worth a lot of money these days. If yeah, we honor the original design legacy of the car. Yeah. So we're gonna talk with Mark, we're gonna go over some of the aspects, and he's gonna show us some of the details of what we did in this conversion to keep it as stock as we possibly could, uh, increase the value, and make a reversible conversion at the same time. So let's check it out. I should say motor bay now. Motor because yeah. it's electric. Yeah. And we've done some, a few changes. You did, we, we did the IRS, so we changed the swing axle to an independent suspension. Correct. Right. Yes. And um, mainly just for handling reasons, correct? Yes. And also we're using a later model transaxle. It's a Beetle transaxle. Right. Which is set two. up for independent suspension. Right. And it's also set up for two speed. Right. Right, so we did the, um, we typically set these up with a two speed transmission. We like to do usually a two to one ratio. So we're targeting about 10 miles an hour for every thousand RPM in first gear and about 20 miles an hour for every 10,000 RPM in sec uh, second gear. And that works out well for us. It kind of gives us city driving and at the same time a really nice freeway gear that gives us about 3,500 at 70 miles an hour. So. Right, and, and the other consideration was the reduction boxes on the original car at the axles. Right, so for the Volkswagen guys that know, the original Type 1s came with a reduction box to give the motor a little bit more of a chance of pushing the bus, a little bit more torque, and it basically is set up like a portal so it drops down. When you convert that and remove them, that's where you get the heavy camber on the rear wheels of the bus. And we wanted to keep a classic look, but still improve the performance. And that's why we went with the independent uh, rear suspension. Cable. Yep. Yeah. So, and then the only thing we had to modify in the whole thing is we had to weld in an upper shock mount, correct? Uh, yeah. There's um, an upper shock, right. shock mount that's on the frame now. Right. That's uh, on the rail, but uh, everything IRS... else was a bolt in as right. far as the IRS. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's a couple of collars that hold on to the torsion uh, uh, bar, right. torsion uh, tube. tube. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yep. And then it looks like we've got, so we added a, a heater blower over here, so they'll have a heater and they'll actually have forced air instead of the regular heat exchanger that requires vehicle movement to work. Correct. And most importantly, defrosting. Yeah. You right. want to keep the windshield clear when it's cold. Right. So we're going to use the factory ducting. So mm -hmm. the heat's typically in a factory situation generated back here and then pushed to the front and we're going to maintain that. I tested it and it works really nicely. Yeah. Actually right yeah. away you have four. Yeah. It's the one up. thing that we actually really like on the electric vehicles. It's the one option we really try to hard sell because electric heaters work so well in EVs. Um, and you know, this one's running about 110 volts, which is pretty much the standard, you know, voltage for one of those 1500 watt heaters. So yeah. it just, it's like having a, a house heater in your bus. And you it's never great. have to wait for the, the engine to warm up before you get right. heat. You get heat right. immediately. Yeah. And then uh, it looks like we've got some connections up here we're getting ready to accept. I know we've got a big battery box in here and that's part of the build is keeping the battery enclosure within the motor bay um, so that we don't have any heavy cabling leaving this area. So essentially 98% of the conversion is in this bay. The only thing that we really have leaving here is the throttle pedal and some instrumentation. Correct? Yeah, that's right, up to the dash. Yeah, that's a few it. input switches, some mode switches. We have like a regen switch. Yeah, that's right, things. Yeah. reverse, yeah. reverse uh, switch. Yeah. So we like that. As you can see, it's a lot of very easy access here on the Type 2 bus. Uh, makes it easy to work on. He's got all his connectors. Of course, you've got, you know, all the work in the contactor box and the wiring over there. And we'll get you some detailed shots where you can take a look at that. And uh, you have this Tyco connector here, high voltage rated connector for the battery box. So the battery box 
will basically just go right into place, plug in here, and then we have some communication as well on the box, right? We've got some CAN bus coming out and a few other things. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So then um, continuing on basically over here, we're gonna have our regular 12 volt battery and we're gonna have a DC converter that charges that. And then against the back wall. Oh, the charger is gonna be over here by the vents. Right, so the, the onboard charger for the Correct. high voltage battery is gonna be over here. And then DC to DC also. DC to DC in our 12 volt. And battery. then the 12 volt. So all right. of that 12 volt source is gonna be on this side. Be on this side. Right. Um, it's pretty impressive that you fit all of this in one motor bay. It's it was your nice. idea. It was yeah, totally well, your you know, idea. Simplify. Less is more. Right? I was encouraged. Yeah. Yeah. I got a lot of encouragement. Well, the centerpiece of this whole installation, it actually isn't the motor, it's the battery box. Mark has done a fantastic job of engineering a singular battery box with all of the BMS and the monitoring, safety cutoff switches, all of that inside. Um, and so we'll take a look at that. So, so moving on to the motor, um, we're gonna hook the inverter up to it. And I understand we're gonna actually use the battery box to mount the inverter Correct. in here, right? Yes. So the battery box goes yeah. in and it carries the inverter with it. Again, right. simplifying the design, kind of like engineering a part to do more than one task. Right, right. yeah, no, it's, it's gonna be sweet because when you wanna show this off, you'll lift that, that, uh, uh, the lid here exactly. and yeah. the inverter will be right there. Right, right. Everything is gonna be right there. It's gonna right. be very clean and um, right. simple. And of course we got the uh, regular voltage, 120 volt version of the Hyper 9, synchronous reluctance, internal permanent magnet assist. We absolutely love this motor, love the inverter, um, high output for such a small price and a, you know, a small footprint as well too. It has a lot. Especially of, the inverter, yeah. A lot of giddy up. Yeah. Let's go take a look at your battery box. All right, let's do Perfect. that. I am battery box. We can have a TV show. safety cutoff, our BMS, high voltage fuse, you've got a data link over here, um, six Tesla modules, am I leaving anything out? No, in fact, it's so self-contained, everything is in one package. Right. I think my favorite feature about this box is the access panel that you put over here on the side because we do have serviceable items inside, the high voltage fuse is inside as mm -hmm. well as the BMS. Um, and so even though you did a bulkhead connector here for the USB and communication, you still had the side plate mm -hmm. uh, accessible so it could come off, you could service the high voltage fuse without removing the box. Yeah, if we need to. Right. With, with it in the car without taking the box out, all we have to do is remove these, uh, these uh, retaining bolts and this whole thing comes right off. So you have easy access to uh, both BMS modules and all of the relays inside. And that really makes it modular because right now we just we basically plug this thing in, give it voltage, and that will go right into the contactor box. So it'll be hooked into our charging circuitry, our BMS, our instrumentation, all mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And uh, of course, the, the, this is going to be tucked back in the motor bay. And so we wanted something kind of front and center. The inverter's right here. And when you open the deck lid, like you were mentioning earlier, it's going to be pretty because the inverter is yep. right there sitting on top of the motor. And uh, those two dangling uh, two-odd cables that you saw in the motor bay will come down. These are the DC positive and negative. Connect to the, uh, the inverter right here. And then the uh, three-phase uh, two-odd cables are going to come right down like this to the motor. So it's, it's going to be a very short throw from the box to the motor. Right. And I would just mention we are using the high voltage version of this, the AC144, so we have a separate pre-charge circuitry, and we're running six of the Tesla modules, so we're running a 36S pack, which would exceed the normal voltage range of this inverter. Yeah. yeah. One of the reasons it seems like we're really spending a lot of time on attention to detail and engineering this right is we want to make this available to our customers for your own DIY conversions. Yeah, we already have customers waiting for right. this box. Yeah, and we're getting a little bit of feedback from them and getting some input to really make sure that we cover all the bases with this. Yeah. Well, fantastic work, Mark. Thanks. Um, I appreciate you taking the time to show this to us and we'll sure. keep following the conversion and uh, 
we should be spinning wheels. It looks close, right? The battery pack's going in, the charger and the converter, and we should be driving soon. Now, well, I look forward to seeing the rest of this conversion. You stay with us and we'll uh, catch up with Mark as he finishes the Samba. Studly technician, Mark Brems, not to be confused with Mark Breams. I am the stud. Lee. People confuse <laughs> me for you. Seeing. Even on Instagram. We're both handsome guys, Mark. What's nice? <laughs> I can't argue with this. <laughs>